Why is everyone hooked on Notion? Well, to understand this, let's talk about IKEA. The IKEA effect is a cognitive bias that causes people to place a disproportionately high value on products that they've partially created. The name derives obviously from the Swedish furniture company IKEA, known for its ready-to-assemble furniture that customers have to put together themselves. If you're addicted to Notion, or you're wondering where this productivity cult came from, then let's dive into the psychological tricks behind the IKEA effect and how Notion uses them to keep you using their software. Here's how Notion gets its users hooked and causes them to stay forever. This is the Notion second brain that I've built. Obviously, there's no data in here, this is a blank one when you download it, but I've built this template. And over the years, I've probably built a dozen or so different Notion dashboards to house my tasks, projects, and at this point, my entire life. And that's the first psychological trick that Notion uses to hook its users. It's called effort justification. When people put effort into a task, they value the outcome more highly. The act of assembling a product makes it feel more personal and valuable. This makes sense, the countless hours I've put into creating this second brain, or the many other Notion templates that I've built, obviously, I'll have a stronger connection to them, and in result, a strong connection to Notion. But I've also downloaded other people's Notion templates, very many actually, and I've seen every Notion video on the internet at this point, even the ones that aren't even released yet and somehow I'm also hooked on Notion when using other people's templates. So what's going on here? Wait a minute! I haven't built these templates. Well, that's psychological trick number two in the IKEA effect. Notion was built to be a productivity juggernaut, housing your tasks, projects, CRMs, company wikis, and over time, it starts to seep into every aspect of your life. And over time, as I correlate ticking off tasks in Notion to seeing my life progress in the direction that I want, I start to love Notion even more. It's the achievement I feel when I work in Notion. Successfully completing a task, like putting the final screw on the furniture that I built, or checking off that checkbox property, can increase feelings of self-efficacy. This sense of accomplishment can make the finished product more valuable in the eyes of the builder. But wait, there's Asana, there's To-Do List, there's Google Suite, Dropbox, there's Trello, and the list goes on. Why aren't we as hooked on those productivity softwares? They do the same thing, right? Well, remember when you first signed into Notion, the free version or the pro version? You log in and it's just a blank document. There's nothing there. And Asana, Trello, and all these other Notion competitors, there's stuff on the screen. With Notion, they leave you with nothing. It's just fend for yourselves. Well, that's psychological trick number three of the IKEA effect. It's the increased sense of ownership. Building something yourself enhances your feeling of ownership. Mine. This heightened sense of ownership leads to a stronger attachment to the item. It's like being dropped on an island and forced to survive. Build fire, build shelter, and I realize this analogy is a bit extreme, but on day 28, when you've built an entire civilization on this island by yourself, you'll obviously feel a strong sense of ownership. And that's what Notion is doing. You're dropped on a blank page and forced to build something by yourself. With no help, other than this channel, obviously, subscribe. Now, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you something! All right. Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! When you were younger, did you ever build a birdhouse? I didn't, I can't build a lack coffee table and all you do is screw on the legs. But, maybe you bought a pre-made one and painted it. You drew a little bird on the side, maybe some leaves, and a butterfly, of course. See, that's how Notion really gets you. Even when you're downloading templates, like this one on the screen, cough, cough, hint, hint, you can still make it your own. That's psychological trick number four in the IKEA effect. Customization and personalization. When people build or customize something, it can better reflect their preferences and identity, leading to a stronger emotional attachment. Imagine you're building an IKEA chair and you're adjusting the height and the back support to be just right for you. Or you've built that IKEA bookcase and now you're putting all your favorite items and books on the shelf. In Notion, you're adding your own projects in there. You're adding tasks, maybe adding widgets. But please, please do not add a weather widget. Do not do that. You are better than that. Don't do it. I know you're thinking about it. Do not add a weather widget. But over time, as you keep adding your data, your projects, your tasks, and then your entire life into Notion, you're bound to feel connected. 
and guaranteed to get hooked on Notion. Click this video here for a walkthrough of my Notion Second Brain template and see how you can become more organized, productive, and motivated.